Hey everybody, in today's video, we're gonna be breaking down the performance for the new EcoFlow Wave 2. Now this is actually the second generation of portable air conditioner from EcoFlow. And this is quite the upgrade over the first gen because this functions as a heat pump. Well, what does that mean? Well, this works as a heater in the winter and an air conditioner in the summer. So you have two devices in one. Now for the most efficiency, this is designed to work on EcoFlow's power stations and expansion batteries using their XT150 port but you can also run this off AC power. Now in this video, I'm gonna be answering three main questions. How much power does it use off AC and DC power? How long will it run on their batteries or power stations? And does this actually work to cool down your living space? Now before answering those three questions and breaking down the performance for this unit, I thought it'd be helpful to give you guys an overview of how this actually works. Now this is just the heat pump. This has no built-in batteries, so this does not work unless you have an external power source. Now this weighs 30 pounds by itself. There's a handle on each side and it is fairly portable and easy to move around. Now to plug in your power sources, you have your power inputs here on the side. This supports AC input and DC input. To power it off AC power, you have this AC cable here. So you can run this off an outlet in your home, off a gas generator, or even off another power station. Now to power this off DC power, you will need EcoFlow's larger power stations that have the XT150 connection or their external smart batteries. Now because those expansion batteries do not support external charging, it's nice that this has a built-in charge controller for both AC charging and DC charging for the expansion batteries that are connected up. For example, if you connect up an expansion battery with the AC cable connected, it will charge that battery with AC input. And you can also plug in solar panels or car charging on that to charge up those batteries as well. It supports up to 400 watts input. The voltage range is 11 to 60 volts and up to 13 amps. So it is nice that this has the built-in charge controller for the expansion batteries when you're running this unit. Now the Wave 2 has a slightly different form factor than what we're used to seeing. For example, everyone's seen the window air conditioning units and most people have seen the indoor portable air conditioning units that have the exhaust hose. This is kind of a combination of the two. Now this is actually more efficient than the floor units with just an exhaust hose and let me explain how that's possible. So when you're running this as an air conditioner, it's easiest if you just draw a line down the middle because there's two halves that each do their own thing. So on the front of the unit, it pulls in air that's in the existing living space. It goes through an exchanger and it comes out much cooler and cools off your living space. The hot air then gets moved to the back of the unit where you have your intake. So it's pulling air from outside your living space, going through another heat exchanger, and then that takes the hot air and moves it outside. So you have two different loops going on. You have the loop going inside, cooling off, and then you have air coming from outside, getting warmer, going outside. This does not create a positive or negative pressure in your room. It's actually a neutral pressure, so you don't have kind of drafts pulling, you know, either cold air in or pushing cold air out. This is much more efficient than having a floor unit with just an exhaust, because if it's just exhausting air out, that creates a negative pressure and it pulls hot air in the rest of your house. Now jumping into the good stuff, in order to test the Wave 2 for power usage numbers and estimated run times, these are the three power options that I used in the video. Starting with the first option here, this is the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. This has 2,048 watt hours of capacity and lithium iron phosphate batteries rated at 3,000 charge cycles till 80% of the original capacity. I've also tested with the Delta 2, which is about half the size of that one at 1,024 watt hours of capacity. And this also has lithium iron phosphate batteries rated at 3,000 charge cycles till 80%. And then I've also tested with the expansion battery option, which has lithium ion or NMC batteries. This has an advertised capacity of 1,159 watt hours, so slightly bigger than the Delta II, but it has 800 charge cycles till 80% of the original capacity. Now, how much power does the Wave 2 actually use? Now, remember you have two different power input sources. You can plug in AC power and DC power, and EcoFlow does advertise that it is more efficient using DC power. And you also have different modes that control the speed of the compressor. You have an eco mode, a normal mode, and a max mode. So how much power does the Wave 2 use on each one of those modes? Well, I've done extensive testing and graphed all the results. Let's throw the graph up on the screen. So the following graph shows the power usage numbers for both DC power and AC power per mode. So on the left-hand side, I've split it up into eco mode, normal mode, and max mode. 
And you can see in eco mode, it pulled 198 watts on average. Normal mode was 345 watts and max mode was 460 watts on average. Now for AC power, it pulled around 238 watts on average for eco mode. For normal mode, it pulled 400 watts and for max mode, it pulled 335 watts on average. So you can see from these numbers that DC power input is definitely more efficient than using AC power. So if you wanted to get longer run times, I would advise using a DC power source. Now, why is the Wave 2 more efficient off DC power versus AC power? Well, this has a DC compressor in it. So when you run off AC power, it has to convert that power to DC power first and then run the compressor. But when you're running off the DC power of the power stations or the smart batteries, it just goes straight into the compressor and runs the compressor. So you get more efficiency by not having to convert that power. Now, the next question that I wanted to answer about the EcoFlow Wave 2 was, what type of run times would you expect to get if you're running this off one of their power stations or smart batteries? Now, remember you have different modes that this can be set to and different size batteries. So what type of run times should you expect? Well, I've done over 45 hours of testing just for this alone. So let's throw up the data on the screen. So the following graph breaks down the total hours of runtime for each of the batteries I tested and each mode. For example, on the left, I have the Delta 2 Max. In the middle, I have the Delta 2, and I have the Wave 2 battery on the far right. Now for Eco Mode, the Delta 2 Max was able to run 12 and a half hours. Normal Mode, it was able to run 5.5, and on Max Mode, it did 3.2. Now the Delta 2 being half the capacity, we did see around half the runtime, 6.1 hours on eco mode, 2.6 hours on normal mode, and 1.6 hours on max mode. And for the Wave 2 battery, which is slightly higher capacity than the Delta 2, we did see longer run times, 6.5 hours on eco mode, 2.9 on normal mode, and 1.7 hours on max mode. Now those are pretty surprising results. You're gonna need a fairly large battery to get a decent amount of run time on the Wave 2. The best performing option that I tested was the Delta 2 Max, and we got 12.5 hours of runtime on Eco Mode and 5.5 hours of runtime on Normal Mode. But you will see later in the video that Eco Mode doesn't do much unless you're in a tiny little space. So you will probably prefer running this in Normal Mode or Max Mode, which means you're gonna need a hefty battery. Now, one thing that I didn't test with the previous graph was, you know, how long can you run if you have solar coming in? And the Delta 2 Max here can take up to 1,000 watts of solar charging input. The Wave 2 uses 500 watts or less. So as long as you have enough solar coming into the power station, you can get unlimited run times. Now, the final question that I wanted to answer about the EcoFlow Wave 2 was, does it actually work? Do you see real tangible results whenever you have this set up in your house, whether it's a large room or a small room, or whether it's out in a vehicle, does it actually make a difference? And so in the final section of the video, I'm gonna show you guys how I've been using this over the last two and a half months and what type of results I've seen. Now, first off, there are so many different ways that you can use a device like this. I don't have a RV. I don't have a small camper or anything. So I tested this in two different rooms in my house. I have like a large dining room kitchen area with a vaulted ceiling. And then I also tested this in our master bedroom. So, One's a large room, one's a smaller room, and I had uh, an actual thermometer that did data logging in each location so you could see that it actually did make a difference. Now connecting this up to my window was a little bit out of the norm because I have horizontal sliding windows. Uh, usually people with windows a window ACs, they have the vertical windows, so you, know, you just put the insert in and then shut the window down. So what I had to do was went to my local hardware store, got this insulation foam, cut two holes, you know, perfectly sized for the actual intake and exhaust to go outside. And then um, when the window shuts, I have foam that locks this in. So it does have a very good seal. Now, when I was using this, I did notice that this exhaust tube gets very hot. I'll throw a couple pictures on the screen. Because this exhaust tube is not insulated, I would suggest putting some sort of towel or blanket on top of this and that really helps stop you know this heat from getting into your house and obviously the shorter this is the more close that you can put this to your window so that this isn't you know having heat come off it the better so i would always just slide this right up next to the window 
uh, so it was as close as possible. But putting a towel on here really reduced the temperature that I felt coming off this exhaust tube. Now, as for the actual temperature difference in the large room with the vaulted ceilings, I was testing this in the dead heat of summer. Some of the days were 100 degrees, 105 degrees. We had one day that was 107 degrees. And so I do have central air, but with the vaulted ceilings, that room kind of still is always just warmer. So with this, I was able to drop the temperature around two degrees over the whole span of the day. So instead of the temperature slowly going up and up and up, this actually was able to hold the temperature and drop it down. So it definitely made the room more comfortable. Now, the other way that I tested this was in our master bedroom. So putting this in there, luckily the window is the same exact size. So I just slid this out of the other window, put this into that window and I'll throw the graph up on the screen. Saw a considerable difference uh, running this um, in the master bedroom. So very comfortable temperatures. You know, if I would have run this on max mode, I think I could have got it down even lower, but was very impressed with the performance in a medium sized room versus the larger room with vaulted ceilings. So does this actually work in your house? Yes, it does. Can you feel a difference? Yes. One of the things that I really liked about this was I was able to aim it kind of where I wanted the air to flow. And so when we were cooking in the kitchen, you know, all the heat coming off the oven or off the stove, I could aim this into that area and it really felt like it would take away that excess heat. So that area just didn't get so hot. One thing that's really cool with a setup like this is I have quite a bit of batteries um, and solar that come into my main system to, you know, keep all, you know, I have six circuits running off a transfer switch. Now that usually gets full around noon. So when the batteries are full, I'm always like, oh, well, how do I use this extra power? This was one of the best ways to use that extra power. When my batteries got full, I turned this thing into max mode and I would just kind of spin it or angle it to where I wanted to cool down. And man, this thing makes a difference. So now the final test that I wanted to do with the Wave 2 was to see if I could keep my truck cab cool on a hot summer day. So I attached on this blower hose that goes to the cold air output. You know, you can kind of angle wherever you want the cold air to go. And because my truck cab windows don't open very well, they're kind of the ones that open like an old style minivan. Um, I bought this four inch duct and I attached it on and shoved it up underneath the window. So my plan was to run this outside. The exhaust would just go out into the environment and it would take the cold air and blow it into the truck cab. Now inside the truck cab, I had a thermometer on a box just at mid level. I also had a thermometer outside to track the ambient temperature outside and I wanted to see what would happen. Now in the past, when I've used the truck to test fridges on a hot summer day, it's gotten up to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So I was hoping that this would at least keep it from getting that hot. Now keep in mind, this truck cab is not insulated and the windows are fairly large. So I started the test, crossed my fingers and we'll see what happens type of thing. So I was running this off the Delta II power station and I had about 600 watts of solar plugged into that. I was over paneling it. And I'll go ahead and throw up the graphs of what actually happened. So you can see the temperature actually stayed kind of normal for a while and then it jumped up a bit when it really got hot. Now, I am surprised that it kept the temperature below ambient. So outside it was 104 degrees and inside it was definitely under 104 degrees. So did it work? Yes, it worked. Maybe there was a way I could put it inside the cab and then exhaust the hot air. You know, it's just, I don't have a really good truck cab to test this out. So it did help keep it from getting up to like 130, 135 degrees, but it was still fairly hot in the back of the truck. Now, if you had um, either insulation in there, it'd make a big difference. If you could block the sun on the windows, it'd probably make a big difference. Um, the other thing is if you wanted to use this at night, I definitely feel if you ran this for a few hours, you could really cool down the back of the truck. You don't have the sun beating down and trying to fight that temperature, but you could actually make it pretty comfortable and then shut it off and not worry about running it through in the entire night. So um, it did work, but just not as good as I was hoping. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea of what to expect if you're using this outside. Now you could definitely use this same, um, you know, exhaust hose or blower hose to blow air into a tent, or you could angle this, you know, kind of wherever you wanted, and you could blow air onto yourself. There's just a lot of options if you wanted to run this outdoors, 
especially if you had solar coming into it, you could get a really long run time on your power station and this could help you be a lot more comfortable outdoors. Well, now that I've covered those three main questions, I wanna talk about price for the Wave 2. Now the Wave 2 is currently on sale on their website for $12.99 and you can actually pick up the bundle with the extra battery for only $400 more for $16.99 and EcoFlow has given you guys, my viewers, a 5% off discount code. I'll include down in the video description. So for $400 more, you can get 1,159 watt hours of capacity to run the Wave 2. So pretty decent deal at less than 50 cents per watt hour. So which option would you guys go with? Would you just purchase this by itself? Would you purchase a standalone power station to run this? Or would you purchase the bundle with the add-on battery? Throw a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Now, I know this video is a little bit late to the scene. There's been some really good in-depth videos that I'll include down in the video description because I didn't go you know, too in-depth on this. I didn't want to make this video too long because a lot of people have already talked about that. So if you want to learn about every single feature with this, check out the video description. I'll also include a video that includes a full teardown so you can see the entire inside of this unit, which was pretty cool. Zach from Jerry Rig Everything tore this down. It was really cool to see the inside. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please smash the thumbs up button if you liked the content. And I will recommend a few other videos from EcoFlow if you are interested in seeing the Delta 2 review or the Delta 2 Max review. I'll have those up here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.